Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be answering the question, do viral infections cause Hashimoto's? Specifically, we're talking about four viruses. We're talking about Epstein-Barr, human herpes 6, Parvo B19, and the virus that causes COVID-19. How do you know if you've got one of these infections and what would you do for treatment? Because I have to warn you, if you've got Hashimoto's, getting treated for a virus is not simple. So we're going to get into it. And I get asked a lot, what causes Hashimoto's? Well, here I'm just going to cut to the chase. Those four viruses I just talked about, Epstein-Barr virus, human herpes 6, human parvo B19, and COVID, they're all associated with Hashimoto's, meaning in some cases, an infection with one of those viruses probably did trigger the Hashimoto's. Now, I've talked about different triggers for Hashimoto's in the past, and viral infections are one of the ways that that can happen. Briefly, it's because of molecular mimicry. It means that the antibodies or the protein structure of the virus is similar to thyroid peroxidase, and so we get cross-reaction. It means your immune system, as it's trying to kill the virus, it gets directed to attack your thyroid gland. So that's what we would call a acquired form of Hashimoto's. I made a video a long time ago about the, the two root causes uh, of Hashimoto's, whether you have a genetic cause or an acquired cause, and viral infections are in that acquired cause. So just straight off the bat, viral infections can cause Hashimoto's, but not 100% of the time, and certainly not in everybody. So if someone's telling you that all Hashimoto's cases are, are caused by Epstein-Barr, that's just not true. I'll give you all the references below that go over all this stuff, but basically we know those viruses are associated with Hashimoto's. But now, here's the other main point of the video. Do you have a current infection? Okay, because these viruses I've talked about are extremely common. A lot of us have been exposed to these viruses. And in the case of Epstein-Barr and human herpes 6, once you get infected with that, it's a lifetime infection. But with EBV and HHV, they're usually dormant slash latent, but they can reactivate. Okay, you're not really getting reinfected. Uh, they're just reactivating. And they reactivate based on the uh, strength and integrity of your immune system which is gonna be abnormal in Hashimoto's, okay? So, some people with Hashimoto's have chronic symptoms uh, like these viral symptoms, and it's because their immune system isn't working well. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the symptoms of these viruses because it's gonna take too long. Basically, that they all cause, in varying degrees, uh, joint and muscle pain, fatigue, malaise, fever, upper respiratory symptoms, etc. right? What's really important, though, is do you have a current infection? How are you gonna find that out? Well. You may have heard about doing like antibody testing for viruses, okay? That is very difficult because a lot of times it can only show you past infection. There's a type of antibody called IgG. So for example, with EBV, you can get a viral capsid antigen test that's IgG. You can get a nuclear antigen test that's uh, IgG. That really can only show you past exposure. And I'm trying not to get too deep into the immunology. What's better for all of those viruses, if you wanna know if you have an infection right now, is what's called a quantitative DNA PCR test. Essentially, it's a polymerase chain reaction test. And what they do is they take your blood sample and they look for copies of one of these viruses and then they try to amplify it. So when you get the results, you'll get either like negative or zero or you'll get a range of copies. And low or a few copies mean, yeah, you have a dormant latent infection with EBV or human herpes virus, but it's probably not doing much. But if you get a bunch of copies, then yeah, it's probably active. Now, you can also look at tests like a CBC, right? A complete blood count with differential. And sometimes you'll see things on there that might tell you it's an active infection, like the lymphocytes will look different or the white blood cell count will look different. You can even do a test I've talked about a lot, which is a lymphocyte MAP test, a lymphocyte immunophenotyping. And specifically, you can see a percent increase in lymphocytes and an increase in natural killer cells. And that can be a sign that we have a viral infection. Sometimes elevated T H1 plus those other markers can be a viral infection. But that really, and I'm telling you this, is the key. It's not whether you had an infection in the past, because honestly, a lot of us have had those. The question is, do you have it now? Because if you've got a viral infection right now, it is a chronic challenge to your immune system, and it will prevent you from feeling good, and prevent your Hashimoto's from being stable, and prevent your Hashimoto's from going into remission. So it's really important to find out if you've got one of these infections. And the best way to do it is a quantitative DNA PCR test, in my opinion. That's what I like to do. So I'm already recommending, if you've got Hashimoto's and you still don't feel good, you might want to get tested and have a lymphocyte immunophenotyping test done. You might want to have one of these PCR tests done to find out 
Do you have an active infection or not? Now, let's talk about treatment if you've actually got one of these viruses. Now, I'm going to warn you, it is not uh, simple. It's not as simple as, oh, I want to take echinacea or I'll take elderberry or something. And here's why. I mentioned the immunophenotype. It's really important when we're talking about autoimmune patients and Hashimoto's patients to realize that you have your own immune system fingerprint, okay? You and I, we've got hands and eyes and ears, but we have our own fingerprint. Same thing with the immune system. We've all got T cells and B cells and CD4 and, and natural killer cells, but how, how many of those we have and the ratios and the balance, it's unique to us. Even if you've got the diagnosis of Hashimoto's, what your immune system is doing is not necessarily what the 100 other people with Hashimoto's, their immune system is doing. And when you put a viral infection on top of that, viruses can both stimulate and suppress the immune system. You really can't just say, oh, you have Epstein-Barr, uh, take X, right? You have human herpes 6, take X. It is complicated. So you've got to make sure you're working with someone that understands about lymphocyte immunophenotyping. I'll give you a good example of how it could go wrong. Let's say that you have a phenotype already when we do the test and your T helper 1 cells are high. So the little teeter-totter we look at between T helper 1 and T helper 2, it's already skewed, right? That's called a polarity, a cytokine polarity. Well, if I give you something that's going to boost Th1 and elderberry and echinacea and those kind of things do that, I can worsen the discrepancy between your immune system and make your autoimmune problem that you have worse, even though it's supposed to be good for the viral problem. So I hope that's making sense. I've seen way too many people over the years that have, you know, been with well-meaning doctors, well-meaning practitioners that have kind of been made worse because that doctor didn't understand this thing we're talking about with immunophenotype, right? So that's kind of a general rule about all autoimmune uh, uh, patients is that what's supposed to be good may not be good for you based on your immunophenotype. So I just want to wrap the video up and say this. Do viruses cause Hashimoto's? Yeah, we know that they do. There's a very strong evidence that they are associated with Hashimoto's, but not in every case. So viruses aren't the cause of Hashimoto's. It's really important you're working with someone that understands that as well. Um, so we're talking about EBV, human herpes 6, parvo B19, and COVID. Those are associated with it. How are you going to find out if you've got one of those right now? Well, I don't recommend doing antibody testing because it can be misleading. A better way to do it is to do quantitative PCR DNA testing. So make sure your person you're working with understands those tests, how to order them. But then in terms of treatment, I highly recommend that someone be using the lymphocyte map immunophenotyping as a guide to find out what's safe for you to use to treat your viral infection if you've got one. Because if you've got a viral infection, you've got to get rid of it. You've got to make it dormant. Now, when I say get rid of, what I'm saying is if you've got an Epstein-Barr infection, uh, a reactivated one, or HHV reactivated, or Parvo B19, you're going to have to do something to try to make that thing dormant, but also not mess up your immune system imbalance worse that you already have because you have Hashimoto's. Okay, that's a lot to talk about. I hope that made sense. I hope that helps. But the bottom line is you got to work with someone that understands all that stuff we just talked about. Okay? Okay, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.